What's up my comic comrades with Thor Love and Thunder just days away and Natalie Portman returning to somehow wield Mjolnir, it's only fitting that we break down the story for how Jane Foster became Thor in the comic books. As always, it pays to know that source material my friends, so let's see how it all went down in the pages of Marvel. To understand how Jane Foster became Thor, we have to first find out how Thor Odin's son became unworthy of the title and opened up the door for someone else to take up the mantle. It all started in Original Sin issue 7 from 2014. In the issue, we see the Avengers battling Fury for Uatu's eyes. At this point, Thor comes in hitting Fury with his hammer saying, Yield Fury, the time has come to explain thyself. Thy metal suit is failing. I do not wish thee harm. Fury responds, Same to you, big guy, but I'm afraid this is gonna hurt. So I see you've got a sister. And I also see, Thor then says, You have access to the Watcher secrets. How? He responds, learn from this hurt, Thor. Learn and be better for it. Never forget that it wasn't a punch that took you down. That despite all your strength, in the end, when you were beaten, all it took was a whisper. As Fury whispers something into Thor's ear, with Thor screaming, what? What did thou say? We then see Thor's hammer land on the moon, just sitting on its surface. On the next page, we see a panel of Thor trying to lift it, but he can't. And this is the moment, friends, where Thor became unworthy due to words whispered by Nick Fury. This would bring us to the beginning of issue one from the 2014 Thor title. Towards the beginning of the issue, you see people standing on the moon watching someone as Odin asks, how long has he been like this? Freya answers, days, weeks, we are not certain. We only know he does not eat, he does not sleep, and he has only left this moon when forced to do so. Odin asks, what has he said? Freya responds, nothing. He won't speak to anyone except the hammer. Odin tells her perhaps he could ignore you, Freya, but the boy will speak to his father. At this point, Odin says, Thor, thy Imperial Allfather Odin has returned to Asgardia and demands of the answers. What absurdity have thou allowed to befall thee here, boy? How is it possible that the Prince of Asgard, the one true God of Thunder, the Odin son has become unworthy? Thor defeated, staring at his hammer, unable to lift it, just ignores his father, so Odin yells, Thor. At which point Thor pleads with his hammer saying, please Mjolnir, please move, but it doesn't. So he gets frustrated and tries to pick it up, but he can't. Freya then tells Odin that is all he does, day and night. Odin tells her, bah, tis plain to see what has happened here. The boy has been bewitched by his enemies, the Enchantress perhaps, or more likely his own brother. She tells Odin, if there is magic at work here, our own mages have been unable to detect it. I spoke with the mortal they call the Captain of America. He told of the great battle his Avengers fight here in the Stars. Their enemy has been imbued with the powers and insights of the cosmic observer known as the Watcher, referring to Nick Fury. At some point during this battle, our son was left as you see. We know not what the enemy did to cause this. Thor then speaks for the first time in weeks to someone besides his hammer saying, all he did was whisper. Odin says, whisper? Did he say whisper? What mere whisper could fell my son and heir? Speak boy. Tell me what words were said. But Thor says nothing, just imagining the words that were spoken to him by Nick Fury. Okay, hold on. I'll tell you what three words can make you unworthy. Cup without lid. Sure, that doesn't make a lot of sense, and I could have thrown an A in there, but you're gonna have to trust me on this one. Our good friends at Corksicle are back once again to keep you on the right drinkware path. Last week, we showed you their amazing Star Wars collection of cups, mugs, tumblers, and sport canteens, and now Corksicle was good enough to send over a few items from their Marvel collection. We freaking love these things. As a matter of fact, everyone on the team was literally lining up to grab one as soon as they got here. Just like the Star Wars line, Corksicle's collection of officially licensed Marvel tumblers, sport canteens, coffee mugs, and stemless cups are all BPA free, have a great silicone bottom to keep them from sliding around, and are made of insulated and reusable stainless steel to keep your cold drinks cool for over nine hours and your hot drinks hot for over three hours. And the character theming on these is dope. From the Black Panther themed sport canteen and coffee mug, to the large Iron Man and Captain America tumblers, to the simple yet effective Marvel logo coffee mug, Corksicle killed it with these Marvel designs. If you're a Marvel fan and you drink liquid on a daily basis, you should go to Corksicle.com and check out their entire Marvel lineup. And to make awesome even better, Corksicle donates a portion of their website sales to Charity Water, a group that works every day to bring clean water access to those who don't have it. That way, everybody gets their drink on. It's the best kind of win-win. Again, go to Corksicle.com or click our link in the description to pick your favorites from the Corksicle Marvel Collection. Then make sure to use code VARIANT10 at checkout to get 10% off your order. That's Corksicle.com and coupon code VARIANT10 at checkout. <laughs> 
Now, if you're wondering what those words were that made Thor unworthy, that were whispered by Fury, it was three simple little words. Gore was right. If you don't know who he is, Gore the God Butcher is by far one of the deadliest enemies Thor has. And his whole purpose for being is to destroy all gods and elder gods across the multiverse, believing them to be inherently cruel. And he does this armed with the mysterious and deadly all black necro sword. As for what does Gore was right mean? Well, you see in Thor God of Thunder issue nine, Gore tells Thor, you know I'm right. That's why you fight so hard. Why you try so desperately hard to seem noble. Because you see just how petty and useless your kind truly are. You know what I know. That gods have never created or cared for anything except themselves. This puts more doubt into Thor about himself and the gods and is what ultimately caused him to lose his worthiness of Mjolnir. Once Nick Fury confirms with his new power of the Watcher to know all the secrets in the universe that Gore was right about everything he said to Thor. Anyway, Anyway, at this point, Odin gets pissed off and is essentially like, fine, and goes to pick up the hammer himself saying, stand aside, boy. This folly ends now. But even Odin is unable to lift it saying, move, you blasted hunk of Yuru. Odin thee, he continues to say, I am the way and the wrath and the wonder. I am him who speaks while galaxies obey. But the hammer still does not budge. As Freya says to Thor, it would appear the enchantment has grown beyond even the enchanter. Perhaps that is for the best. Worthiness should not be defined by the whims of magic weapons. Rise, my son, and let the hammer be damned. Rise and remember the hero that you are. Right after this, ravens appear to tell Odin that Midgard is being attacked. Odin then says, it would appear the frost giants have invaded Midgard. Freya says, and so it begins. I have feared this day would come. A little bit after this, while Odin and Freya are talking, Thor gets up and starts walking away. His mother asks, Thor, where are you going, my son? He then looks back and finally speaks to the Hall of Weapons and then home. A little bit after this, we see Thor do exactly that, return to Earth with a weapon he got from the Hall of Weapons, a battle axe named Jarn Bjorn, which he uses to start attacking Malekith and the Frost Giants. Then while in a one-on-one -on -one fight with Malekith, the conniving Elf Lord says, correct me if I'm wrong, but something seems different about you. I can't quite place it. The beard, perhaps? No, that's not it. And as they continue fighting, he keeps saying, yes, definitely something different about you. You. It's right in front of my face, isn't it? I know, but I still can't quite put my finger on it. Then it clicks and Malekith says, Ah yes, now I see it. You've lost your little hammer. How terribly disappointing that must be for you. I know how dearly you love that hammer. But look at the bright side, Thor. Without that big heavy Mjolnir to lug about all the time, you've no more need for so many cumbersome arms. As he picks up Thor's axe, which Thor previously dropped due to a frost giant grabbing him and chops off his left arm. Then back at the moon, we see a hammer sitting there all by itself before a silhouette of a person walks up saying, there must always be a Thor. She then bends over to pick up the hammer, and when she touches it, it glows and electrifies with lightning as the inscription changes from whoever holds this hammer, if he be worthy, shall possess the power of Thor. To whoever holds this hammer, if she be worthy, shall possess the power of Thor. As we see on the last page, a mysterious woman has become the new Thor, but it's not so mysterious because obviously we now know that it's Jane Foster Thor. She was the next worthy person in line of becoming Thor and wielding Mjolnir. So the hammer called to her with the Bifrost bringing her to the moon via Heimdall as we see in a scene at the beginning of the Mighty Thor issue 705. She then walks over, picks it up, and became Thor. Now in issue two of the Thor series, we see her on the moon picking up Mjolnir for the first time saying, by the golden spires of Asgard, Mjolnir, while thinking to herself, I'm wearing armor and a mask. Yeah, a mask is probably a good idea. It changed me, the hammer. I can't believe I'm holding Thor's Mjolnir. Does that make me? She then says aloud, Nay, no time for questions. Midgard is in peril. She then remembers how Thor flies by throwing his hammer and makes her way back to Midgard. Once there, she starts battling frost giants in epic Thor fashion. In issue three of the series, she will continue to battle frost giants and come into confrontation with Malekith. But by the end of the issue, Thor finds this new mystery woman wielding his hammer and says, unhand my hammer, woman, or know the wrath of Thor. In issue four of the series, we see Thor walk towards her, confronting her, saying, the hammer does not belong to thee. She replies, I understand your concern, son of Odin, but this, it's not the time for such a discussion. He tells her there is no discussion to be had. Put down the hammer, thief, and then tell me, what have you done with my mother? This leads to a confrontation with the two of them and an epic fight that lasts a few pages. And as the two are going at it, she tells him, I did not ask for this. The hammer chose me. He says, you bewitched it. What manner of sorceress are you? She tells him, I am the goddess of thunder. He says, you are a blasphemy. There cannot be two Thors. 
She then says, you will not frighten me with thunder. I command the lightning too. He tells her, command all you'd like. You have no idea what it means to wield Mjolnir, what it costs. I would die for that hammer. I have died for it, and I will die again this day if need be. At this point, the hammer then starts flying around the room, knocking out all the frost giants before returning to her hand with her saying, Thor, I am truly sorry. He then says to her, in all our years together, in all our many battles, Mjolnir never flew like that for me. You have brought new life to that hammer. Whoever you are, you are correct. It has chosen you. Just tell me one thing. Are you my mother? I know that she is missing and I sent something of her nobility in. Then on the next page, she kisses Thor on the mouth with her saying, still think I'm your mother? He then looks at her shocked saying, I certainly hope not. At this point, the two team up and defeat the Frost Giants and chase Malekith away. With the Frost Giants defeated in front of several Avengers and Thor's mother, the new Thor says, I did not ask for this. The hammer called to me. I did only what needed to be done. Please know, Thor, that I never. Thor interrupts her saying, no, do not call me by that name. I am not worthy of it. His mom then interrupts saying, son, please. But he says, I am still the Prince of Asgard. I am still the Odin son, but she is Thor now. The hammer has the power to destroy worlds or save them. Carry it well, Thor. She then says, I do not know what to say, except I. I will carry it. I am the mighty Thor. Then fast forward to the last issue of the series, issue eight. On the last three pages, we see that the new lady Thor is Dr. Jane Foster, Thor's on and off again love interest. She says, I hide because I won't be stopped and they would try to stop me if they ever learn the truth. The world needs a Thor. That's all that really matters. We need a God who understands what it means to be humble, to be mortal, a God who knows how precious life is, how delicate, a God who struggles every day to live a worthy life, who suffers so that no one else will have to. A god who loves the earth enough to die for it. As we see her deactivate her powers, she finally says, I am Dr. Jane Foster, and I will not stop being the mighty Thor, even though it is killing me. Now, why is it killing her, you might be asking? Well, if you were unaware, at this point in time, Jane Foster in the comics was dying of breast cancer. And the reason why being Thor was killing her was explained to us in issue one of the 2016 Mighty Thor series. On the first few pages of said issue, we see Jane in the hospital going through chemotherapy. She says, the doctors don't understand why none of their treatments seem to be working. But I do. I just can't tell them. We find out later in the issue why her treatments aren't working as she gives us captions while being Thor. She says, I spent all morning in the hospital injecting poison into my body on purpose. Toxic chemicals designed to kill the cancer cells growing inside me. But as soon as I picked up the hammer, that was all for nothing. The transformation neutralizes the effects of the chemotherapy. It purges the poison from my body, but not the cancer. Because the cancer is just another part of me now. A part that keeps getting bigger. And it's killing me a little more each time I change back. So why change back at all? Believe me, I've asked myself that question many times over the last few months. But the answer is always the same. Not even the mighty Thor is a match for every challenge. If I'm going to save everyone I know and love from the specter of war, then Jane Foster has a job to do as well. And it's about time I got back at it. So how crazy is it that the transformation into Thor neutralizes the effects of her chemotherapy, causing the cancer to grow and kill her? But she does it anyway because she has a responsibility to save the one she loves as Thor. It's pretty damn noble. Speaking of noble, in issue 705 of the Mighty Thor, she throws rope around Mangog, getting him tangled in it, then ties the other end of the rope to Mjolnir. Then chucks the hammer into the sun to pull Mangog into the sun and kill him, but also sacrificing herself, giving up the power of Thor now that Mjolnir would be lost. Odin's son even says, what did you just do? You threw it into the sun. You killed Mjolnir. You just, you just killed you. She says, I know. He then tells her, but you're going to change back now and you can't, you won't survive another. She says, Odin's son, I know. I know exactly what I've done. He says, we, we can still get you to the healers, but she says there isn't time for that. Not that it would matter even if there was. He says, no, it cannot end like this, Jane Foster. We need more time. She then says, let's not waste what little we have. He replies, but I, I know not what to say. She then just grabs his face and says, say goodbye as the two embrace and kiss each other with her eventually dying in his arms on the last page of the issue. But you know what they say, the good shall be rewarded. And in the War of the Realms, Omega issue one, we see that she was rewarded for her sacrifice by being brought back to life and becoming a Valkyrie. And just like that, my comic comrades, you now know how Jane Foster became Thor for a few years in the comics before ultimately becoming a Valkyrie, which she is now. Although Marvel has recently made Jane Foster Thor once again. But obviously after she became a Valkyrie, Thor found his way and became worthy again, taking back the mantle of Thor, as well as becoming the King of Asgard, and has been kicking some serious butt in Donny Cates' Thor series. But there you have it, my comic comrades, Lady Thor, aka Jane Foster Thor. What did you think of her time as Thor? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Are you excited to see her become Thor in the MCU? 
let us know in the comments. And that's gonna bring today's episode to a close, but if you enjoyed this video, check out this one right here. And if you like all of our videos, be sure to subscribe, like, and comment. It helps the channel grow. But other than that, I'll see your lovely faces next time when I talk about all things comics.